So we're here with a legendary coach, legendary athlete, Tanya Bruford Bailey. So how are you feeling today after you got a couple athletes run? How are you feeling today? Yeah, really good. Just getting ready to go into nationals, which is always an exciting time. So this yeah. was a great meet. I actually ran uh, here uh, probably 30 years ago, but <laughs> the track is still fast. <laughs> so that was great. Yeah. Nice. And so you're from Ohio, yes. right? And then you went to school in Illinois. Illinois. Talk to me about what made you decide to go to Illinois. The coach. I went to coach for Gary Winkler, who was my coach uh, as a collegiate athlete and a pro. Still, I call him coach. <laughs> but um, yeah, I heard about this guy who was really technical with the hurdles and who could uh, teach me a lot. And it was true. And um, so I, and I had a great career because of that. So I, I picked the right coach. Nice. And then talk to me about that transition. You said that you held on to your coach from college to pro. Mm -hmm. But talk about that transition from college to pro, um, you know, learning the ropes of even just being an adult and how navigating that. Yeah. Well, you know, it wasn't too difficult for me because uh, we didn't change our training because I was a pro. I trained exactly the way I trained when I was a college athlete. Mm -hmm. Just didn't have as many races. Um, so other than that, I think everything went smooth and I was pretty much a pretty mature athlete going, I mean, I made the Olympic team my junior year in college um, and had ran a lot of um, national team events prior to that. So I was kind of like in my groove by the time I became a pro. So the transition wasn't too difficult for me. Nice. And then of course you, um, we were speaking a little bit about it yesterday where you started coaching at Illinois, you went to Texas and then you went, uh, you're now you're a pro coach. Yes. Um, so can you talk about that, that transition and, you know, some of the struggles you faced and, you know, mm -hmm. how it's going Challenges. Out? Well, um, yeah, it was a uh, really challenging in the beginning because like I said, um, you know, as a pro coach, you don't know what you don't have until you become a pro coach. <laughs> there are so many uh, uh, things that come along with being a college coach that you get, that you take advantage of from the university and the equipment and the, the facilities and just everything that comes along with that you don't have as a pro coach. And like I said, you don't realize you don't have it until it's not there. <laughs> um, and so just having to make that adjustment right away with from one day to the next um, was pretty challenging but like I said when I, my back is up against the wall is when I'm the toughest when I'm the strongest and uh, so it was um, it made it work nice and then um, can you talk about some of the things that you learned as you were coming up as a um, as an athlete and how some of those things might help you now as a coach yeah one of the biggest things I think is loyalty and that's why I said I had one coach I had one club coach who coached me from 8 to 18 and then I had my college coach from 18 to when I was you know 30 I don't know when I finished running but around that time and I had the same coach so it's just all about loyalty and figuring out you know if things don't go the way you wanted to you figure it out together right that's the most important thing I think about having a coach athlete relationship and not just jumping ship the moment something doesn't go the way you want or if another coach or is whispering in your ear or that kind of thing I think it's really important to really trust your coach uh, not just as an as a um a partnership but just you know as a human being like just having that kind of full trust in each other and working together and, and making things right because it truly is a partnership nice and then talking about that partnership you've had um you have athletes like gabby thomas right you've worked with her kind of out of college and then you also have athletes like ashley spencer or a kinnison who ran today um and they're like kind of you know in the second half of their career in a sense um, can you talk to me about the ways that you support all these different athletes at different stages of their career? Yeah, I think it's like I said, it's important to be consistent. Um, the older they get, they're in your program longer, so they kind of know what is going to come next. And um, so it just makes it a lot easier to be able to transition that way. And then once you become, so a lot of this more has to do with maturity. So the older you get, everything gets easier because you mature as it goes. I mean, if I had to run 400 hurdles right now in my 25 year old body I would imagine that I would run faster because I'm smarter I'm more mature I understand it better I understand how to take care of myself off the track those are things that you just learn as you get older so I I, uh, I think that the when the athlete get, athletes get more mature it actually makes your job easier as a coach nice and then just two other questions you um, you know you came up in the well you grew up in like the 70s and the 80s um, and then of course you had a lot of success during the 90s um, but talk to me about because we're coming up on the 50th anniversary of title nine mm -hmm. um, can you talk to me about maybe some of the women who you looked up to or women who were around your age during that time and some of the things that they were able to benefit from Title IX? Yeah, I looked up to like Evelyn Ashford, Gwen Torrance, uh, Wilma Rudolph I just love. <laughs> um, so, you know, those are women that we you know we look at it now and I look at how um, 
the athletes in this era like seem to have it so easy. There's so much money, and you know the, the tracks are so fantastic. They have these new shoes, and then I think about you know the people that came before me and how they probably were looking at us like got it made you know so you always have to appreciate the generation that came before you because their struggle was always harder yeah. right I mean I've never sat down and to say well, what struggles did you actually go through but I know you know that their struggle was always harder as the next generation uh, comes along so Absolutely. and last question so of course you did the 400 hurdles and you barely like kind of dabbled outside of that for the most yeah. part a little bit but in a parallel universe in it um, if you could choose any event to do what would you do? Not the 400 hurdles. I really like the 100 hurdles and I did well in the 100 hurdles as a collegiate athlete, but I'm very realistic and I mean, I, my stride rhythm and stride pattern just would not allow me to be that short for 8.5 meters, right? Um, so removing that from the picture, I would say the 200. I really loved running the 200. I just could never do it because it's the race right after the 400 hurdles. So the few opportunities that I had to run, I really enjoyed doing it, but that would be the event that I would like to do. Hey. That's why I love watching Gabby run. Hey, very dope. <laughs> <laughs> and now you got Gabby, you got Tamara, right? Yeah, you got a whole Tamara, plethora of them. Yeah. So. Wonderful. Well, Tanya Buford Bailey, amazing, amazing career. You've been influencing so many athletes more than you know, even Thank the you ones so you coach. So, I appreciate really it. appreciate it. Thank you very much.